okay uh, so we were discussing about object oriented software engineering right in this case specifically i am going to teach you about uh, uh, software designing but uh, before moving further there are few things which i would like to discuss with you these things are uh, very commonly used these days for example not everybody is clear about what is the difference between software developer software programmer software engineer software architect and software designer although somewhat all terms are related right but uh, still there is somewhat some difference is there right so now i would like to tell you the difference between these right now when you look for difference the very basic term is software programmer right whenever you get employed in any company so usually they give you some programming task to you uh, that uh, they give predefined a uh, scenario to you like this is what you need to do this is how i want to this you just need to code uh, that thing into some programming language and that's it this is the role of a programmer uh, after that after years of experience maybe what they will expect is you will be having some experience in dealing with things so they are going to let's say uh advance your roles now you will not be dealing with the direct problem itself what you are going to do is you are going to understand the system maybe uh, you will be a software designer or maybe a software architect reason uh, depending upon the kind of uh, environment you are working in so software architect means you are just dealing with the exact software you are the one who is going to decide the component systems and all how the system is going to flow everything software designer also has the same kind of task so architecting and designing both are somewhat related but they have different different roles in software designing you have to design each and every component how uh, a particular parts of the other components are related over there so these are the uh, major uh, difference between software in architect and software designing so as long as i'll proceed with this lecture i'm going to tell you the difference even in more detail don't worry about that so now in this chapter what questions we are uh, going to let's say tackle is that what exactly is design what journal approaches do designer use and what types of design are there these are the major three question which i am going to discuss in this session so now without delaying any further let's move on to what is design basically uh, software designing is a kind of a problem solving uh, process for example a customer will come to you that sir i want this 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 and uh, I, you have to i want it to be in a software so can you solve it for me so you are taking some time and after that you will uh, analyze his problem and based upon that what you are going to do is you are going to understand that how functionally you can solve this problem right so this is how functional requirements comes into picture for example the person says that i want to to create a shuttle bus for me right and so to take passenger from one uh, stop or to board the passenger from one stop and you are going to deboard the passenger on other stop this is what functional requirement right now there may be some constraints related to non functional requirement those constraints are like known as non functional requirements for example you want to check for budget for example it says the bus performance should be like that it should not take more than 2 minute hold on any intermediate uh, stop so uh, there can be many constraint depending upon customer what he requires maybe it's timing maybe it's budget maybe it's related to functionality maybe it is related to per performance so it it may vary right but uh, what you need to do is you need to make a functional requirement after that you should take care of non functional requirements as well and obviously uh, the main purpose is definitely to have a good quality software so this is what i want to say about what is the process of design got it so let's move on to next slide now after that it says that uh, designer as a series of decision so reason is whenever a software designer design something right so you receive some uh, a particular problem right now it's it's you you have to solve this right what you going to do is you are going to divide a sub a particular problem into sub problem a sub problem into sub sub problem 
until or unless you get a specific solution this is approach generally software designer follow now what is happening what is happening over here is that a particular designer is getting some problem after that based upon that it is providing some solution uh, for sub problems and sub problems and sub problem now whenever a software engineer receive any kind of problem it suggests some kind of solution for example uh, you want to travel from here to let's say the city right now to travel uh, to city there are multiple option either you can go by a uh, let's say motorbike or you can go by a let's say car or let's say there is another way by walk right now so for every problem there will be multiple solution all the solution will be known as design option and obviously uh, what you are going to do is you are going to do, choose one option either you will go by car or you will go by walk or you may go by motorbike right so which option suits your better maybe from economic point of view maybe from technical point of view so there may be any criteria obviously you need to meet functional and non functional requirement right so if it is out of your budget so you are going to choose by walk instead of choose by motorbike right and if motorbike suits your budget you will avoid car and if see this is how it will proceed similarly so you have many design option now you have to check you have to take one decision out of that that means one option you are going to select as a final answer that is known as design decision now obviously design decision will resolve all this kind of issues after that the best alternative is chosen so the process involves choosing the best option from among all the alternative so this is how you are going to make a series of design decision you can consider it like this uh, whenever you make a particular design decision na you should have knowledge of something now what 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 is the something first of all you should have knowledge of requirement second thing you should have knowledge of the design you have created so far third you should have knowledge of technology available fourth you should have knowledge of software design principle and best practices fifth you should know about what technology or what thing or what solution has worked in past so definitely it is going to work in future although these things are not mentioned in uh, the slides but still i am telling you oh sorry it's in next slide uh, to make each design decision what software engineer uses knowledge of requirement knowledge of design knowledge of technology available software design principle that is known as best practices and after that what has worked out in well in past so these are the uh, things which allows you to make some decision right for example uh, if you are making some system right whether you want to make for a stand alone system or you should make it on a cloud for example i am making an erp or accounting software so my my technology can be like i i should host it on cloud it will be accessible anytime everywhere data will be provided as a backup or something 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 right now alternative for the solution is that the customer cannot afford a internet connection reason is it's it's a very small job so you cannot put it on cloud right better to create a windows application so depending upon the constraint you can have all kind of design decision capability within you so that you can make a good design so let's move on to next slide for example this is known as design space uh, these are very good slides uh, in this book right so you can refer it so design space is that the space of of possible design that could be achieved by choosing different set of alternative is often known as design space for example uh, let's say you start from here right after that you are building system whether you can build client server or monolithic so you choose cloud server for example after that you can choose flat client or thin client so let's say you choose thin client so after that uh, separate ui uh, layer for client or no separate ui let's say you choose this after that you are going to program in java let's say this so now let's say programming in java decision goes wrong let's say there was some option that is not available in java but it is available in c++ 
or maybe let's say uh, you are having some problem related to some uh, client issue or let's say uh, user uh, user require the same interface just like we have chosen separate ui for client right so so client require that uh, all everybody in the usage should have same interface so you should go back to the previous one select this and after that again make a decision so this is how design process work if even if you are wrong at some point you can go back and you can change your decision and after that you can start the production so this is this whole diagram is known as design space and uh, these are the basic various design uh, decisions you have made you can move up and uh, move uh, back and forth right but make sure uh later you change the la more later you change it certainly the more is the cost right so if you feel have made some decision you should have st you should stick to it reason it it will cost you more by changing your decision again and again got it so be careful in designing this kind of in making this kind of decision right this is about this slide now what a particular system is made of a particular system is made up of different different components right these components are considered as any piece of software hardware which has a uh, create clear role for example if i ask you to create a particular laptop right now laptop is made up of let's say many component it has processor it has ram it has let's say many chipset available in the motherboard right so now these all are component it can be isolated that means you can take it out uh, for example ram got malfunctioning or it's not working properly you don't need to worry you just need to what you what you need to do is you need to just take out the ram replace it with another ram so that means it can be isolated and you it can it allow you to replace it with different component which has same kind of functionality got it so this is the definition of component now uh, what is the ma major use of being designing component is that component make you make your design to be reusable for example many time you can use that now so it also performs some special purpose function for example uh, other than use and reuse for example if i consider in terms of software a component can be source code executable file dll that is your dynamic link libraries your database and uh, also uh, sometimes component can be generated at uh, let's say compile time sometimes at uh, uh, run time right uh, what special purpose function is that for example you want to cre uh, create a ui for example you want to create a ui for a particular system so in ui you can have various component also got it so these kind of component uh, may be, which you create if it is reusable they can be used to perform different different kind of task i'll take the example later on don't worry about that yeah next module now module is a kind of component right but the thing is module is a term used at a programming language level for example in java module is known as method classes or package in some other language they are considered as another thing in c you consider it as a file or function so this is the same thing as a uh, component but it is a programming language a uh, programming language level uh, command so module is used at that level okay after that we reach to system now a system is a logical entity having a set of definable responsibility or objective and consisting of hardware or of software hardware of or software or both right now thing is whenever you do something for example you are designing a car car is a system it is made up of many sub system for example it is made up of engine gear steering clutch brake many other system right so now in a system you can have many kind of specification a system can have a specification which is then implemented by a collection of components right a system continue to exist even if components are changed or replaced for example uh, you replace the engine of your car right still if you replace it your car will work fine right so now what what is the goal of requirement analysis is that what your system can do 
what are the its responsibility you have to identify it now a system can be further divided into subsystem right in subsystem you what you are going to do is you are going to divide a major complex system into smaller one smaller one smaller one this process goes on so these are called subsystem so in this lecture i have identified uh, various part of the system right subsystem module component there is another term uh, which is not mentioned over here that is framework here it is now framework is also part of a component right uh, for example uh, you want to show some demo right so you can create demo by using framework it's not a hardware entity it's like a software you can consider it like as for example uh, if i uh, if i consider about your uh, let's say your childhood maybe you have seen uh, many people creating some dummies uh, statues or something by using some frame right similarly if you want to create some kind of a component you can use framework easily right so now here is it is related a system can have uh, many component and component is further have module and framework system can be a, uh, a, a sub, uh, system can be a collection of subsystem so for the time being i am stopping at this point in next lecture or next part of the video what we are going to discuss top down and bottom up designing so thank you guys